All right, we are going to be continuing our project that we started yesterday with those concentric circles. And we are going to be adding a silhouetted scene to the front of it. So it might end up looking something kind of like this. So your first step is going to be to dream up some ideas of what you might want it to look like. You can see in the example here, there's like an underwater scene with some turtles. Let's see it a little bit bigger right there, right? So there could be something like that. It could be maybe some sharks or hot air balloons at a fair, some trees with fences, a cat in a tree, somebody swinging on a swing set, or as you can see where I took my inspiration from, I thought of doing the giraffes. Okay, so feel free to think of anything. It could be a race car. It could be your favorite animal. It might be um, some people that, you know, maybe in your family or friends, people that you love holding hands, like up to you. Think of what you want that to look like. And whenever you're ready, we're going to take a black marker, permanent marker, and we're going to create that scene onto our paper. So maybe I would do want to add, um, maybe I want to do that cat in a tree. So all we're going to do is use our permanent marker and start to, to draw that scene out. Now we are all going to have different scenes and um, different, you know, creatures or people in it. So I'm not going to make you watch me draw my entire thing out here. Um, because you can go ahead and, and dream up what you want yours to be. Um, and go ahead and, and add that to the top of your concentric circles. Um, and I can't wait to see what it turns out like. Um, once you're done, don't forget to add it into the Hall of Frame and share that with everybody so we can check out how beautifully it came together. But for right now, if you want to be working on this, go ahead and pause this video. And once you're done creating this and it's finished and you add it to the Hall of Frame, come on back and we will pick up at part two of our project today. Just kidding, I'm not actually paused, but hopefully you did pause for a minute there. Let's talk about the next part of our project. Um, so coming back into our directions for today, part two is we are going to take two pieces of uh, paper and we're going to cut them in half. Um, so we're going to have four pieces total, right? Because it was two, but then we cut them in half, so now there's four pieces. And we're going to paint one with tone, one with tint, one with shade, and one with hue. Okay, so we're just going to have one with each. So here's my two pieces of paper. I'm just going to roughly cut them in half. Now, I don't have to be too precise with this because as you'll find out tomorrow, we are just going to be kind of cutting this and ripping it into smaller pieces anyway, kind of making like mosaic bits. So once again, I'm going to do hue, tint, tone and shade on each of them. So choose a color, choose a color, any color, whatever you want to use for this. And I'll get one out over here for mine. You know what I haven't done yet? I haven't done green, have I? Let's do some green. So once again, on one of them, I'm just gonna do hue. I don't even need to mix that, do I? Nope. With hue, that is just the color as it is straight out of the bottle. So here we go, straight out of the bottle. Notice I am not even worried about making any particular shape or design. I really just want to get the hue as is onto the paper. Put that somewhere safe to dry. We don't want it like on the floor where somebody might step on it or something might happen to it. <laughs> All right, next I'm going to do my tint. So I'm going to add only a slight bit of my color and I'm going to do more of the white, right? If my white will come out here, there we go. Because with the tint, we don't need as much of the color because the color is going to be stronger than the white is. Once it's good and mixed up, same thing. 
paint that on. Oops, I probably could have mixed mine a little bit better, couldn't have I? That's okay. I'll mix it as I'm painting. There we go. Now it's good and mixed up. So there is my tint. Let's move on to, we'll do the tone next because all I have to do now to get a tone, I already have white and green mixed, don't I? So if I just add, I'm going to put some black in a different one. If I just add a teeny tiny amount of black to it, the white that was already in there mixed with the black that I just added, well, that makes gray. And we've already got the green in there, too, or whatever color you've chosen. So that's a way to take a little shortcut there and not have to start from scratch. And once you've got that ready to go, paint your tone of whatever color you've chosen onto your third piece of paper. And last but not least, we're going to be doing our shade. So I've already got a little bit of black on here. I'm going to be adding it to my green. Remember, black is a really strong color, so we don't need to add a ton of it. I'm just going to grab a little bit here, mix it on up with my green, and even that teeny tiny amount of black is still going to turn it real dark real quick because black is such a pigmented and powerful color. There we have it. I have got my colors ready to go. I'm going to set those off to the side to dry so that they're ready to go for next class. We'll see you then.